Nice one for clicking on this video. If you want even more reactions to that press conference that you're about to watch, you can come over to Redmen Plus. Go to redmenplus.com and sign up as either a club captain or a club legend, and you can watch my reaction to Jurgen Klopp's press conference. Now let's get right into the video. Yeah, thanks very much. Morning, Jürgen. Um, I know you've talked about it changing the mood, that victory on, on, on Wednesday. Perfect timing. How vital was it? I, I suppose we're talking about is it the kickstart you need of bearing in mind you have had one very big win already this season? Oh, I don't know. It's I, I don't know why everybody makes now such a fuss of it. Of course, it changed the mood, but I didn't start. I didn't when I go into press conference and said, "Oh, it changed the mood massively." I got. The, Asked the question. Somebody asked me the question. I said, "Yes, of course it changed the mood. How couldn't it?" Um, but we are now not. Even if people think that maybe that dumb, that we um, think that's the only thing we needed to 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 beat Man City, and nothing really to do with that. Um, we still have to figure out who is available after the, the Rangers game for for the City game, and um, then we will make a lineup, and then we will go in. There. If we would have lost, we would have give it a try. Um, and now we give it a try um, at Anfield with our people in our bag against the best football team in the world. So um, that's a big challenge, but it always was and will always be. And um, we always were looking forward to it and do it this time. I don't really want to touch on too many negatives after, after such a, a great result, but is there still a concern about conceding the first goal, especially on Sunday you've got Erling Haaland around? You know, are, you, are you preparing any special plans for him? So first goal conceding, yeah, it's a concern. Look at the situation. We played, we played really good football in this in the, in the early stages of the game, and in this in this moment where we where, where we lose the ball, um, in a moment where every team in the world opens up the pitch in a moment when you start playing, um, and that's what we did. Uh, we lost the ball in a, in a moment where we were not compact because we couldn't be compact. Two passes later, half it is alone in front of the goal. So these things can happen. Um, unfortunately, if you lose the ball in the wrong moment, and um, that's what's happened there. Um, apart from that, uh, what was better plans against uh, Haaland? All, like always, um, obviously, when you play against, um, yeah, probably uh, for sure, the moment, in the moment, the best strike in the world, um, you have to make sure that he doesn't get that many balls, um, and that's what you have to defend before you come into the challenge with him, with himself. Um, so that's what we will try. But um, against City, obviously, the problem is if you if you close ha Haaland down um, with too many players. Then you open up gaps for all the other uh, world-class players, so that will not um, will not make life easier. But it's um, it's a challenge, it's a, a football problem, and we we try to find solutions. At the other end of the field, you've got world-class players of your own, and, and Mo Salah getting that hat trick on Wednesday nights. Was that the confidence boost that he needed, if at all? It helps for sure, definitely. You could see the goals, but then all they were all different. The first one. Um, and yeah, I really think the, it was a block ball from from Diogo, and then Mo picks it up, brings it down, and then the reaction there, brilliant. Sees the, um, uh, he obviously, I think, pretty sure he learned from the um, from the first game against um, against Rangers. And the goalie reacted a lot of times really well because he knew when we will finish, and Mo was a surprising finish with the, with the front of his foot and um, a really good goal. And then the other two, typical Mo, if you want, when he's when he's um, in the cheeky mood, in a confident mood. The second one was very special because I think the only one who saw that gap there in the short corner was him. And the second one is um, the third one was a, a brilliant, a brilliant goal as well. So um, bring it to the far corner. So all these things um, we know they help um, for sure. But um, no, what can I say? The best thing you want for your strikers is that they that they um, that they score and they all scored or were involved in goals. That's good. And now we have to make a lineup for this game. Uh, just in terms of Erling Haaland, if I may, when did he first properly appear on on your radar? You, you described him as the best. Player possibly or best striker, I think you said in the world at the moment. In the world, so, uh, when did he first properly? Salzburg. Salzburg. Yeah, we played them. And what was it? What is it about him? Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 even when he was very young, uh, younger than now, we could see the, the potential. It was insane. Um, 
I, remember, I don't think he started against us in a home game, if I'm 100% right. I think it was injured, came on, or, or something like that. I don't know it exactly, but we were already pretty busy with thinking about him. I can remember that. How can you close him down? How can you um, shut him down, if you want? Um, he scored anyway, pretty sure. Um, yeah, no, like physically, he sets new standards. So it's it's physically the the, the combination of of being really physical and technical and um, sensational awareness. Uh, his orientation on the pitch is exceptional. Uh, he knows always where the decisive gaps are. Barely offside, um, reads that really well. Uh, so many things would make him a striker. And now in this specific case with City, um, some of the best. Um, players around him in the world, so in, in setting up goals, in finding the, the right moment for the passes, Kevin De Bruyne, Ilkay Gundogan, Bernardo Silva, Phil Foden, Mares, whoever, they all they all are really good at that, so that's a perfect fit, no doubt about that. And if we're talking about him and Mo, should we include Roberto Firmino given what he's doing at the moment as well in that conversation? Bobby is in a really good moment, really happy for him, really, really happy for him. It's extremely helpful when the boys feel even it's for us obviously not the best situ the, the best moment um, we've ever had. Um, it's helpful when these boys at least still know where the goal is. Um, we just need to to spread the goals a bit more to different games. Let me say it like this: um, uh, should not focus on one and then um, nine and then seven and, and then nil. That, that's but we we know that. Um, so no, how is that positive? Things always help all of us and the footballers as well. Thank you. Julia? Jürgen, do you feel it will have a different feel to this fixture this weekend because of the start that City have had and, and the season that you've encountered so far? Normally it's always been built as a t potential title decider. Could be this year. Just not with us. <laughs> um, uh, no, not really. Look, when we when we when you play City, it's um, results left and right are, are not really re not really important because this game um, requires all your focus, requires all the things you know about football, all it's everything. I said it a couple of times. I enjoy preparing the game really, but it's um, anyway the, the the biggest challenge you can face in football because football is all about closing down spaces, closing down players, um, having challenges in the, right, in the right areas, these kind of thing. And with City, it's always, if you if you are here, then if you close them down here, then they are there. If you close that gap, you open up that gap because the pitch is so big and we have only 10 players to close all the gaps. Um, so always a challenge. Um, so that, what I want to say with that, it's not that we now feel different or whatever and think um, it's a home game, it's Enfield, it's it's us against Man City. Yes, they have. They are, they are. They are in the moment definitely the best football team in the world. That's how it is. But we will give it a try anyway, knowing there are no guarantees. Uh, but we, we know we get help from uh, a full end field, and we we try to use that. Mm -hmm. Jürgen, um, just going back to what you just said there about the, the, enjoying the preparation for a game like this. You and City have been the dominant teams for the last few years now. How? How much do you enjoy pitting your wits against um, Pep and, and his team, both as challengers and also on a tactical level as well? Very much. Very much. It's it's not that I don't enjoy playing other games, but this is just a different challenge because they're good everywhere. So that's how it is. Um, there are no weak points, really, where I say, oh, OK, if we can do that, then they might struggle here or there. Yeah, there's not a lot. To be honest, but that's why they are the team they are, um, and um, no, it's it's a job to do. That's what we do, and yes, we know obviously we have a couple of good results against them, not enough <laughs> for for winning the title more often. But um, we were, in most of the games we were really in the game, and that's what was always very important. First and foremost, you have to be in the game. You need to have your own moments. You, know, you cannot. Uh, there are moments where you have to suffer. It's always the case where they let you run. Or make you run, and then. Uh, but there are other moments where you have to be dominant as well, and that's what we will try. And um, that's a, yeah, find the right balance for these moments is the is the challenge. There seems to be a mutual respect be between you as well. And when City have hit you a couple of times, they they credited Liverpool for pushing them on. And has that been the same for you? Do they drive you on as well? 
Yeah, yeah, of course. During the season, it was only one moment actually where, where you can say, okay, we're there, had something to celebrate, and we not. It was then the last match day twice. Apart from that, we, we were in a similar situation. We always, but that's now the past. I, I, I couldn't care less what that what that meant. To be honest, um, it's yes, but that they helped us to 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 keep going. Of course, and that's what in the seasons when we were. I'm not sure when it was, when we both were kind of running away. Um, of course, that's, that, that you need a fixing point, and we were the point for them, and they were the point for us. That, that's that's true, but this season is obviously different. But even in these seasons, the, the games against City, we always prepared in the same way. Again, listen, the last result is not important, the next result not important, this is important, this game. Um, all the things... Um, which are needed for this game, we have to make sure that we bring them on the pitch, and that's a, a lot. Carl Markham, just to go back to Mo, when he came on in the big, he played more centrally, and I'm just wondering if that's something that can benefit him going forward. You, you've done it occasionally with him, or is it, was it just game specific for, for that night? No, in this game it was the change we made, but because um, Mo came on and, and, and Harvey stayed on the pitch and we didn't change the system, so, um, and he can play that position, no doubt about that, but he can play a, a wider position as well. It's in, in the moments when he finished the situations off, he was more central, that makes sense. But it was still his space, especially for two goals. When he set up the goal for Harvey, then, which Diogo might have finished off already. Um, then he was was more flexible, and that's the flexibility what we need in in our offensive moments. But um, it's not so it's not so different. It's um, uh, when when we are when we when whichever system we play um, for finishing, you need to be in and around the box. That's how it is. Um, and um, yeah. That day he was there definitely, but not. No, I don't think it had too much to do with the, with, the, with the position. There were situations when 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 we were in possession, where more went to the right side, so to his, to his left right wing. Um, it's completely normal. You need to be flexible. You need to fill up the spaces. You need to 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 um, force the defensive players. To react on different scenarios, it's quite comfortable when you're always in the same space as an attacker. Then the defender knows, okay, when the ball is coming, I'll be there, stuff like this. But if you are, uh, when if we are more flexible, it makes it immediately much more difficult. And that was really good in these moments. But I think two of the goals he scored from his typical mm -hmm. position, so nothing special. Yeah, Jones. Yeah, you, 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 you said you say Harlan's the best striker in the world. You work with Lewandowski, who's probably in that conversation still now. Have you ever seen a player like Harlem with such a broad range of, of skills to the striker because he's, he's so physical and so quick and so technical as well? Seen that close, maybe not, but other tall, physical, technical strikers, maybe not exactly this. We have Slatan, exceptional, is tall and has a lot of things. So I think for, 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 for Erling, it's just that the thing is that he, he combines so many things and it, it's rare that you have. Um, uh, so his finishing skills are obviously exceptional, um, but um, he has re he moves really smart. That makes him tricky. And then, and then he you only can use the speed if you use it uh, in a smart way because uh, just running is not helpful if you if you forget the ball or whatever. So, but uh, you, and especially behind the line, you need to make make sure that you are patient enough, and not being offside, and all this kind of thing. The the, the package makes it special. But yeah. Let's see. No more for the open now, James. Yeah, and just on Bobby, this is his best start to the season. He's had a level point of goals and assists. What, what do you think has changed? Is it is it rhythm? Is it a physical thing? Is it more just confidence? Or? Look, in our situation, nobody had now played the season. Uh, he should have played yet. Yes, Bobby, numbers wise, it is like this, but now he scored last night two. And how many against Bournemouth? Two. Two, two, and one, two and three assists. So, no, Bobby is an exceptional player. I said that. I think nobody else said it more often than I said it. But um, it's like this: not that Bobby was flying in all the games. 
Well, now we take the numbers and uh, and say, oh yeah, that's the best start. That might be statistically the case, but we as a team didn't have the best start in in, in our lives. So and that's for different reasons. Yeah, but this moment helps, of course. Now scoring two, loved the first goal, loved the second goal, which was incredible cross by by Joey. Uh, but that Bobby is there makes a difference. And if you score before a goal, then you arrive in that moment in the right moment. Then you have to thrive to 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 be in the back of the defender to to get the foot on the ball. But then you hit the ball and the ball goes through the legs of the goalie. In other games, the ball goes through the leg of the goalie and it's out and you think, how can that happen? So these kind of things, we, you have to do, be in these situations as often as somehow possible. So um, nothing changed really for Bobby. Um, Bobby played always played when he was fit um, in this team. He always um, contributed when he was fit, all these kind of things. But we have to do it again and again and again. And there were a lot of positive moments. But again, I, with all respect to Rangers, we know it's a big gap between Rangers and, and Manchester City um, and um, so we have to prepare the game um, in a different way of course but with aspects of that and using the positive feeling we have now but that alone will not give us anything against City um, but if something we were in the, in, the, in the last few years we always were pretty brave against City so now we um, we, we realized in the, uh, before we changed system that this bravery in defending led a little bit to a few gaps which we we couldn't close in the moment. So, we, how I said, we have to see who we can line up for for Sunday. We cannot just make decisions and say everybody's available or not. And um, we have to we have to make sure that we um, are the best defending unit we can be in the moments when they are in possession. And that means everything. That means deep defending. That means high press. That means midfield press. That means all the different areas where you have to defend them and where you can cause them problems. And that's what we have to figure out, um, which, which, what is the, what, which are the right moments, where should we, we go for them and where, have, where do we have to let them come a little bit, these kind of things. And then um, when you have the ball, you need everybody in an idle world, full of confidence, being cheeky, being flexible, pass the ball. So you could see that in the game now, we, we played a good game at Rangers. I, even when we were one nil down, it was the football we played against the defensive unit was really, really good. And um, Harvey and Fabio were really involved in that, were really flexible. So we were, we were good in part. Both sixes did really well. Eh? So, um, and that, that was really helpful. And that's what you have to do. You have to pass the ball around and let them defend as well. Um, usually the problem is they are that impressive and that um, dangerous in, in all the things they do that sometimes you forget that you can cause them problems as well. Uh, that's a normal reaction on pressure. Uh, but we um, have to remind ourselves that's possible and then we will see what we can do with that. We have to see uh, no final decisions yet, but... Um, no, we have to see. Thank you for watching that video. We all love Jürgen Klopp, don't we? So why don't you go over to redmenplus.com, sign up as a club captain or club legend, and you can get my reaction to our beloved manager, Jürgen Klopp. So yeah, head over there, sign up, and get the press conference reaction show. Nice one. Have a good day.